As you're probably already aware by now, it's important to be very familiar with your body. There's nothing kinky or perverted about it. It's important uh, so that you can recognize changes that may not be normal or may uh, be a reason for alarm. Maybe you found out about your cancer because you were diligent with mammograms and ultrasounds, but you may have been like me and found a lump like this lump that I found in the picture on your own. Either way, you found your breast cancer because of a baseline. Uh, that is what your doctor or you started with and you noticed changes over time um, and uh, you were aware when something was not normal looking and that led to tests and biopsies to find out whether or not you had a breast cancer diagnosis. In the same way, you need to become familiar with what is normal for your body before treatment starts and do not feel ashamed or shy to uh, speak up when you're concerned about something during your treatment. Your doctor, if they're a good doctor, is going to tell you many things to expect. Uh, for example, he or she might tell you that chemotherapy is going to make you tired and nauseous. From personal experience, I had hot flashes, um, but I was warned that it was very important to go to the emergency room if I had a high fever. Uh, this was because my compromised immune system could be fighting an infection that I might not be able to handle as I normally did. It's really important to weigh what to expect against what feels really wrong during your breast cancer treatment. Um, bring symptoms to your doctor's attention. Uh, number one, she or he may be able to prescribe something to alleviate symptoms. You're not going to feel awesome during treatment. Uh, that is not uh, something that's going to be guaranteed, but it helps if symptoms can be alleviated. For example, my oncologist prescribed Zofran for me. Um, this did not completely uh, end my nausea with my chemotherapy, but it did help curb it. It wasn't as extreme because I took it like clockwork, even though I started to hate the taste of it. I still took it like clockwork because I knew that my uh, nausea could be even more extreme had I not taken it. Number two, a big frustration among breast cancer patients is that it's sometimes hard to tell if something is a side effect of treatment or a symptom of metastasis or recurrence because a lot of these side effects and symptoms are, look like the same thing. She or he can usually tell when a symptom is normal in magnitude or if something warrants further testing. But if you do not bring the symptom or side effect to them, they aren't going to be aware that something's wrong. And number three, if you still feel like something is uh, wrong, you have a right to a second opinion. It could, it is always better to err on the side of caution um, just in case, and it also gives you some peace of mind. Another thing it's very important to do is balance information from your doctor with information from the direct care staff. Um, there are chances where miscommunication may occur, just like in any job. Um, so when there is miscommunication or disagreement between doctors and direct care staff, I have learned to listen more closely to direct care staff. I don't completely dismiss what doctors say, but I follow the direct care staff's suggestions first. Doctors see you once in a while and direct care staff see you more frequently. Direct care staff see the same reactions to treatment over and over with patients and on, on a more daily basis, where a doctor may not see firsthand results of treatment as frequently or to the same magnitude as direct care staff does. Um, direct care staff can tell when something is wrong much more quickly. Um, if you look at the picture on this slide, those are my radiation burns. Uh, I didn't listen to the direct care staff as closely as I should have. I was listening more to the doctor's suggestions and uh, what he said because I thought he was more educated than the direct care staff. Um, while he may have more education, like I said, the direct care staff sees these things more often. Uh, they see them before the doctor does. 
and uh, they have experience that may not be in books but it's just as important as the doctor's knowledge and even though they have studies to back them up that uh, doesn't shine a light to experience with direct uh, care. I could have alleviated a lot of these symptoms possibly had I listened better to the direct care staff. When in doubt, it's very important to seek a patient care advocate if you are feel like you cannot trust uh, fully trust the treatment of your providers. There are variables when working with direct care staff and doctors. You don't know how much experience they have on their job or how well they keep up with their continuing education. So if you have any doubts, uh, don't be afraid to seek help from a patient care advocate. A friend of mine is stage four. She was incorrectly staged. She kept telling her uh, providers about her back pain and they weren't listening closely to her and she ended up collapsing in her backyard. She lives out in the country and this was a very terrifying experience for her. Uh, she didn't know if anybody was going to be aware she was out there. Thank goodness her dogs were there so uh, eventually someone did know that she needed help. Uh, I don't know if her staging would have been different Probably not because her back pain was a symptom uh, that it metastasized to her spine. But this is just an example of how you really do need to be on top of your care. Your doctors um, can only do so much. They provide the treatment, but they don't experience the treatment with you. You're the one experiencing the treatment. So you really do need to take ownership of this with as much knowledge as you can get and also bringing forth any of your symptoms or side effects because they may not be aware of them otherwise. And if they're not paying attention to you, then get somebody to tell them to pay attention to you or get a second opinion and uh, maximize your care.